Hi, this is Farrell, and welcome to my YouTube channel and this week's video, Robot Todd, issue one, cover. So I finished the whole issue, and this is the cover. These are the pencils, a couple different photos. The lighting was a little off, so that's why it has a kind of yellow patina to it all. And also, too, I've had this drawing sitting on my desk for years, literally years, uh, like three years or something, uh, where I started it. Anyway, the time finally came to paint ink and paint the dang thing so there's the inks on just the back cover um i didn't do a lot of video taking this time just because it was taking me so long to do and uh i just felt weird about just constantly having the time the camera on but um you can see it's like there's a lot of little details and so it wasn't like it was like super tedious to work on like it was actually fairly fun it just took me a long time uh compared to regular todd pages which aren't quite as uh, detailed and it's a lot of drawing on here <laughs> a lot of line work and um, yeah, you can see even here I'm using a, a Raphael brush I got a smaller one I for years for like 20 years I've been using these 8404 number fours and so I, I, I kind of switched it up I was having a hard time finding them I think because of the war and stuff they're, uh, they're Russian Kolinsky's for um, but I got uh, I got a couple, and they're smaller sizes, like two and three, rather than a four, and it uh, it made it a little easier and more fun to have like a new brush that was smaller. But I uh, it ended up being taking me like a long time to do. And then yeah, I don't know if that's just because it was a smaller brush, well, partly, and also mostly probably because how much detail I had and how much line work. And so I, I tried to keep the line work, the ink work anyway, to just the two main characters and the stuff in the foreground. Well, that was the idea anyway. It was just to, to Fern Fells on the left and Robot Todd on the right uh, to keep them uh, inked, to ink them, and then to keep the background uninked. Color it, color all the background and everything. But as you can see from this shot that I actually ended up inking a lot of the stuff kind of floating around in the foreground. I kept the ghost, wizard ghost character pretty much just all paint because I wanted to have more of like an ethereal quality to it. And the back background, I tried to keep that pretty much uh, sort of like hazy atmospheric perspective kind of thing going on. So yeah, I'm using the last bit of the uh, the premixed blue, the intense blue that I had for the ghost, and I might have actually went a little darker than I intended, but um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the with the finished result. There's a few things here and there that I'll I'll mention once once kind of see a little bit more, but uh, with yeah with Fern Fells here, this character here, if you've been watching any of these videos or reading the reading along the comic on the Patreon, um, she's not. Uh, the main character, she's like uh, in like maybe like four or five pages of, of this first issue, but um, she features fair, fairly prominently. I mean, she has like probably the most dialogue in the comic is from her um, on those just on those few pages. And the main star is is Robot Todd there on the right, who doesn't do a lot of talking. Like he can talk, but he mostly communicates via symbols that he projects from like the top of his head um they're kind of like these 3d images that uh may or may not have like some kind of tangible physical quality to them um i haven't really uh, locked in on that it, basically he's he's you know fairly all-powerful <laughs> um omnipotent but uh at least as far as like um uh you know, sustaining injury and things like that. He's very resilient. I mean, he has all manner of powers, but um, they're nothing like, uh, you know, shoots lasers out of his eyes or, any, you know, lifts up trucks or anything like that. I mean, I think, like, as the story progresses, I'm going to be revealing certain aspects to his abilities. But for the most part, he's just basically like, uh, I don't want to say like a punching bag, but he can get, like, his ass kicked pretty hard and still be functional. Uh, he only has one weakness and that's ghosts. So that's like, I have this wizard ghost sort of following him and will kind of 
dogging his heels, you know. Um, so yeah, here I'm uh, laying in the background. Finally, the uh, after I got the main character or her Fernfels and the ghost colored. And I'm working left to right on this for the most part, just because I didn't want to drag be dragging my hand through parts that I'd already done. You know, it just kind of creates a mess. So. I decided to try to stick mostly working from left to right. So it seems a little antithetical, to, not antithetical, but counterintuitive. Is that the right phrase I'm looking for? Uh, to start with uh, the back cover instead of the front cover, but um, that's just the way this is going to be laid out. So it just made more sense for me to do, you know, the um, start from at the left side of the side of the spread. Uh, and I realized too, after I, um, I mean, I kind of thought it like while I was working on it, but, um, after I scanned this in, tried to match up the front and the back that there's, those lines don't exactly, uh, I think my eyeball filled in the space between the two. Like I was thinking like, oh, this is going to have a spine, but it's going to be a floppy. So it's not going to have a spine. Um, so it's kind of, there, it's a little off center, the, uh, where the lines match up because of that space in between. Uh, so I, I don't know if I'm going to even, uh, I'm going to even bother with, with doing that, but, um, yeah, I might just let it stand be uneven kind of, uh, I don't know though. I have to think about it, but anyway, so here I'm, I'm coloring the, uh, robot Todd and basically his coloring job is pretty easy at this point. It's just, uh, since he's wearing like a white suit, uh, a lot of times I'll just leave it all white and won't mess with doing any colors on them but um but the uh what I mostly do is just certain areas that are going to be in shadow I just do kind of like a, a wash of Payne's gray and if it gets too dark I add a little a little of the uh bleed proof white to it the uh, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white it's um kind of like a, a chalky it's, it's kind of like wash I'm not exactly sure what the substance that it's made out of is but it's kind of like a sort of a gouache opaque white that's just easier for me to use than white gouache or white watercolor um and uh the only thing problem with it is that you, it gets kind of um gray like muddy with some color with most all color so it's just kind of i try to use it a little sparingly when um ideally if i want something to be white i like the white of the paper to, to but then you know sometimes i mess up or whatever, and I have to use that uh, pro way. But it's good kind of for mixing things if I want grays, if I want just different values of gray, then that's great for that. Um, rather, because Payne's gray is pretty dark once it gets on the paper. It looks actually darker on paper, maybe just when it's wet, but it definitely looks a lot darker on paper than it does just in the, in the tray. So um, yeah, that's just something for me to be aware of there. Um, and you can see I have like <laughs> Netflix going on in the right hand side. So maybe that's another reason this thing took me so long to do. But um, yeah, here we're getting pretty close to being done with it. I just started uh, stop taking videos. I think at this point started taking progress shots. Um, so you can see here I still have like the title to do, a bunch of stuff in the background. But I feel like this is like second to last session. And um, I did, you know, I've been erasing through the whole process too. I don't know if you can see in any of the videos, but I'll go in and like clean up a lot of the pencils as I'm coloring. I mean, I have to wait, you have to wait for it to dry. Otherwise it'll just rip up the paper. But, you know, once, you know, once I'm done with the session, so, you know, this is what I was talking about here with the bird, the, uh, the part that I wasn't super happy with, like the, the blue bird there looks, I feel like looks great when everything else behind it is kind of like lighter color or white, it really pops. But once I had finished with the cover, that was the part that I'm like least happy with. Like looking at it now, it's just hanging above my desk. It kind of like sort of blends in a little bit more than I'd like it to. And here you can see uh, just the different, the way the different lighting affects the way it looks. Like you'll see at the end when, uh, Oh yeah, here. So here, I decided to take you through my like my scanning process. That's my scanner. It's like a work Epson Workforce. I'll put the number in the description if you want to care to look it up. But I yeah, I lay it face down, flat on the glass, and I put like a piece of foam core and a piece of matte uh, like illustration board on top. And then I have this iron weight that I found in my basement that I put on top of the scanner. 
And um, yeah, here you can see my Photoshop set up here. It's like uh, 400 DPI, put that there. And then I have like a file folder that I put them all in. I've saved, been saving these as JPEGs. Um, I'm gonna have to go through and change. It's not that hard to do, but to save them all as TIFFs, like when I'm ready for print. But right now, just, just it's a little easier for me to save them all as JPEGs. And um, yeah, I saved this as like the uh, Robot Todd. I put it in the issue one folder and uh, saved it as uh, the back cover. And uh, yeah, JPEG, I don't think I have any other, uh, any other thing that I mess with. I keep it all like just whatever the basic settings. I don't mess with the levels, you know, change anything. And really with Photoshop even, um, very little Photoshop. I might clean up a thing here or there you know, here or there, but for the most part, I leave, I, I try to just keep it as much close to the original as possible, and so there's the finish this week, um, if you want, check out my Patreon, I've got a Patreon, only two dollars a month, and you can help make this comic happen, and um, I really appreciate it, you watching this, and I'll see you in about a week, thanks.